Hey everybody, welcome to T Roy Cooks. I appreciate you joining us here again. We're gonna do an all day cook for you. I'm gonna do a pork butt. We're gonna do it low and slow on my Kamado Joe, which I haven't fired up in a while, and I'll explain why here in just a little bit. I'm gonna throw on some of this Oak Ridge Barbecue. It's their secret weapon rub. It's good for pork and chicken, or pretty much anything. And it's not a paid advertisement or anything for Oak Ridge Barbecue. I buy this stuff myself. Anything you see in me use on my channel, I use it because I really enjoy it, and I think that you probably would also. Y'all go check them out though, Oak Ridge Barbecue. Hit show more down below the video, open the description box up, and you can find the links for anything that I mention in the video, okay? Um, also, Johnny Meatballs, my good friend Johnny from New York. He was kind enough to send me this fabulous Army West Point hat, and uh, also some pickles and some stuffed olives and stuff from up in New York area. I appreciate it, Johnny, very, very much. And I'm proud to wear this hat for all my service men and women out there. I salute ya. Y'all stick around. Now, what I did, I took some of this Oak Ridge Barbecue Secret Weapon, and I put it in this nice shaker, which you can also get from Oak Ridge Barbecue. That's like I did. Or, you know, wherever you can find these. They're really, really handy. They have nice holes in the top of them, too, so you can get the, the all of the ingredients out of there from the rub. All right, first things first. Pork butt, I don't do this all the time. Sometimes I use Worcestershire sauce. Sometimes I just use a little bit of uh, olive oil or something, but we're going with mustard today, all right? Rub your mustard on there, and I've had a question on this on my Thursday chat. Um, somebody was talking about how much mustard. There you go, you just see it. You just need a really thin layer of mustard. You don't want it to be really thick. I mean, you don't want your rub to, say, cake up on there. You just want a nice thin layer on there. Go ahead and put your rub on. There we go. Make sure you get all the sides. All the sides, really, really good. Let's see if I can get this one over here. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And my Kamado Joe is still coming up to temp. Missed a little bit right there. All right. Now y'all look at that beautiful color. It's wonderful stuff. You can see the sugar in there. Good stuff. All right, flipping this over, I'm gonna do the other side. We're gonna cook this fat side up, folks. Show you the Kamado Joe here in a minute. Hey everybody, I wanted to explain to you before we throw this pork butt on. Just wanted to explain to you why I haven't been using my Kamado Joe that often. I had an air gap in the, the, between the lid and the base. Let me show you what I did and uh, how I got it fixed. Uh, what, when, when you first get these Kamado Joes, go through it. Make sure all the nuts and bolts and everything are tight. Make sure everything's tight. And I, I actually did that, but over the course of the last year or so, opening and closing the lid, this band right here that holds this lid up, all right, this band that goes around the top, portion of the Kamado, the lid. Apparently this nut back here was a little bit loose and that made this band rise up on the lid a little bit back here so the band wasn't sitting flush all the way around the base of the lid. This back end had risen up almost up to this this little ledge here, this little lip. And what that did, that caused me, let me swing you over here, that caused me to have an, about a four inch air gap on this side right here. So I'd have smoke come billowing out of here. I couldn't get the lid to sit flush with the base. So that was a major issue with me, and that's probably why I had trouble cooking low and slow all this time. Uh, so what I did, let me, let, me, let me show you what I did here. Let me swing you around. Bear with me, folks. Let me get you to the right angle where y'all can see me. What I did, I uh, got in touch with John Sessler. Y'all probably know him. Back in the day, he had the uh, Man Cave Mills channel, okay? And what John did, uh, he's got his own YouTube channel with Kamado Joe. He does all the Kamado Joe stuff. If y'all haven't checked him out, check out. Just do a search on YouTube for Kamado Joe, and you'll find John Setzler's channel there. But uh, John's a good friend, and I explained the situation to him about my Kamado Joe. Sent him some pictures of what I was seeing. He forwarded that on to the people at Kamado Joe themselves, the company. And uh, they, uh, they, they got back with me and told me what I needed to do to get this fixed. So I've made the adjustments. My lid's sitting flush with the, with the base now, so I'm thinking everything is good to go. We're fixing to throw this pork butt on and see how she cooks. Again, it's an all-day cook for a seven and a half pound bone-in pork butt. But I just wanted to thank John again and the people at Kamado Joe for helping me out. They're, they're very customer friendly, folks. If you have any issues, check out the Kamado Joe forums for help or contact Kamado Joe themselves. And if you're interested in uh, John Setzler's channel, y'all check the uh, description below. Just hit show more. It'll open it up and you can find John there. Thanks, John. Appreciate your help, buddy. I think I'm good to go. We're going to check it out. See how this pork butt does. <laughs> y'all stick around. 
All right, folks, my uh, Komodo Joe's up to about 265, 270. Make sure you scrub down your grill grates. And as you can see my pork butt over here, you can look, see a little bit of shine from the sunlight coming in. It's got a little bit of sweat on it over here. And I always like to wait about half hour after I throw the rub on just to give it that little sweaty look. I think that helps. Let's go ahead and see if we can throw this baby on. Oh, and if you look down here, I've got, uh, I've got the divide and conquer system in. And I've got the uh, heat deflectors down in there on the lower rack. And I'm not putting any pan or drip pan or anything in there. I just, I just crank this thing up. It's a self-cleaning oven, folks. Crank it up and it'll clear out just like a self-cleaning oven would. So I don't really worry about putting in any kind of drip pans or anything. Gonna throw that in the middle there. And uh, here in a little bit, after several hours, I'm gonna probably throw a probe in there. But right now, we're just gonna close the lid. We're gonna let this baby cook. We'll check on it here shortly. Hey everybody, we're five hours in. This is what she's looking like. Looks really nice. The bark's coming along real nice. Now it's time for me to start spritzing, but before I do, I thought I would uh, go ahead and put my meat probes in there. Get back you out a little bit and show you what I'm doing here. I've got this Thermoworks smoke device here, and on the back it's got an on-off button. Just hold it down for a few seconds and it turn on. This is a lot easier than the Maverick to set up, okay? Uh, basically you've got two temp probes that go in the side here. To set the high temp or the you know probe one and probe two okay there's a high and a low for each one so just hit set then go up and down until you get your desired temp hit set and it switches to the lower one up and down set it however you like if you hold it down it'll scroll real fast hit set you're done easy as that let me go ahead and throw some probes in here and stick my grill grape probe in here. That way we can tell how close we are. Yeah, I'll put that back here. That way it'll be out of the way. All right, and let's see, I've got my uh, 325 high and 220 low. Oh, and this thing remembers when you turn it off, it remembers what you last had it set at. So the bottom one right here, this is gonna be for my grill grate. And again, these are those uh, these are the super fast probes that come with this thing. And she's beeping, let me turn that off. There we go. She's beeping because the lid's open. All right, so my meat probe is the top one here. There we go. Gonna see if I can find me a nice little bit right here. That's the bone. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, so we're down in the, the thicker end here. <clears throat> Let's see where we're at right here. Now we're getting pretty close. Internal on my uh, pork butt's 182. And of course the temp on the pit's dropping because I got the lid open. In fact, I'm going to do it this way. Let's, let's go this way. There we go. That way I can do it. And then uh, hold the, this is the receiver. It's wireless. So this is your receiver. It'll automatically connect to the main, the main probe here. The main device we're good to go tap that it'll stop now spritz this baby up i got some apple juice in here y'all have asked me about this uh this mister this is just a mister that i got from uh from lowe's actually uh it was kind of kind of expensive almost 10 bucks but i've had it for several years never had any issues with it again spritz it right up I'm going to leave this main base here by the pit, and it's got magnets magnets on the back. You can actually, uh, you know, attach it to something that's magnetic if you want, like my Yoda Wichita sitting over there. So, close that baby back down. The uh, Komodo Joe is doing fantastic, and um, it's holding about 270, 275. Varies a little bit because of slump charcoal. It'll do that, you know. I'm not worried about 5, 10, even 15 or 20 degrees. I'll let that baby rock. We'll see y'all here in a little bit when it's getting closer to being done. All right, folks, I'm reading uh, 200 degrees here at my main. See, 200 degrees. I think we're ready, but let's uh, let's just double check it. Let's see how tender. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's the bone right here. That's why you got a little split happening. That's ready, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. We're gonna wrap it up in some foil hot and uh, let it rest for at least an hour hour and a half maybe two hours even 
We'll check back later. I'll let you know how long it cooked. All right, everybody. This has been resting for like an hour. I went ahead and I had it rested in foil. Pulled the foil off of it. Let me show you what we got. Go down here. Karen's working the camera, folks. And Karen's really hungry. Sure am. <laughs> this is super tender, folks. Look, just pulls apart like that. Let's take this bone out of here. Ooh, it's hot. Really hot. Bone comes out clean. That's what we've got, folks. Nice. Really, really nice. That's some really nice bark on there. My word, my word. Karen, this is going to be fabulous. It sure is. Woo! All right. You want a little bite? Yes, I do. <laughs> help, help yourself there, girl. Mm. Mm. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to shred this up, folks. Just pull it apart by fork. We'll make some uh, sandwiches here. I'll show you that here in a little bit. All right, folks. We're going to make us a little pulled pork sandwich here. Grab you a nice handful, put it on your sandwich, get you some of that nice bark happening right there. It's good stuff. Throw in a little bit of this, uh, you know you want it, barbecue sauce from my buddy Manuel. Link down below, y'all check him out. Get you some, I'll include his Facebook page in the uh, links below where you can order some for yourself. Johnny Meatballs sent me some of this horseradish pickles. We're gonna throw some of that on there. These pickles are fabulous. Wonderful stuff. Okay. A little bit of coleslaw. Yeah, we're going North Carolina style on this. All right, there we go, folks. That is a nice sandwich happening. Let's give this a taste. Here we go, folks. Let's give this a try. Karen said it's fabulous. We're gonna check it out. Mm. Mm. That's good. I didn't throw any, any uh, wood chunks on the uh, the coals and the Kamado, so it doesn't have a lot of smoke flavor. Those pickles are jamming with this pulled pork, though. And you know you want it, barbecue sauce? Good stuff, y'all need to get you some of that. Overall, I say it's thumbs up. Good stuff, folks. Hit show more down below, y'all check out. All the links I have down there, get you some of this fine stuff. And by all means, hope you share the video. And when you do, please tell all your folks, T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody.